So I know oftentimes we hear that when you're learning how to code, you should be building projects. You should be learning by doing. And I know I've told you guys this on my channel. I've been told so many times, and it's pretty hard to get started with that if you don't know where to start or you're super new to the coding world. Where do you even begin? You may be like me where you don't even have a design background or you don't have a design mentality. So it's kind of hard to think of something to build. Or if you can't think of a project that's a personal project, that's something that would actually help you in your life. It could be hard to know where to start. So today I wanted to share some resources that I wish I knew a long time ago that can help you on that part of your journey when you're trying to learn by doing, but you just can't think of an idea or you just don't know where to start. So if you're interested in that, be sure to watch the rest of this video. So the very first resource that I wanna to talk to you guys about is frontendpractice.com. You guys saw this in my last video where I was walking through what I would do as a front-end developer, like my process of what I would do on a day-to-day -day for a nine-to-five job as a web developer. And so I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about why I like this platform. First of all, I love the fact that it's free. I love anything free, especially when you are on a coding journey. I am going to try to share as many free resources with you guys as I can because you know, I know a lot of people are getting into the tech space for the fact that they need, you know, better income. So I try to share as many free things on my platform as I possibly can. And this is one of them. The second reason I love them is because of the resources that they give you right out the gate. You get the design, you get a link to the actual website. So these are examples of websites that are actually websites. They are actual live real websites for real businesses or just real projects that people have built. And the idea is to take that screenshot, the design that is provided for you, and you have to decide how you're going to go about coding it out. How are you going to structure the semantics of your HTML? How are you going to do the CSS to style it? Um, some of them require JavaScript, so how are you going to go about the logic for that? That's why I love platforms like this. Another reason I love this platform is because they give you a color palette with the hex codes already there. And we all know like that is super important. Usually when you get a design from a designer, at least in my experience, they will have any kind of hex codes that you need to have those actual specific colors that you need in your palette for the CSS portion of your project. I also love that you can choose the difficulty level of the project for the one that you wanna to try to build out. There's level one, two, and three. And of course, level one being very beginner, so it's probably mostly HTML, CSS. But I love the fact that you get to choose. And also, when you click on, say you click on a level one project, if it becomes to the point where you're building it out and you're like, okay, this is too easy, they actually have where you can click on there and say, oh, this is too easy, and they give you a link to another project, or they tell you what to do to go and find something a little bit more challenging. Or if you get to a project and it's a little too challenging, they do the opposite where they say, okay, too challenging, how about we go back a step, go and choose a level one. So if you thought maybe you could start with a level two, maybe it's a little bit too challenging as you're looking through those different projects, maybe start with a level one and work your way up. Now, one thing I will say about this platform from my experience, and it may be to do with the fact that these are real websites, you don't get the assets. Assets meaning like the icons, the images that they're actually using. So I did have to do some searching on my own, do some screenshotting, and I could be missing something, but as far as I could see, they don't provide that for you. You do kind of have to either use the screenshots or Google the icons that they use on the website, but because they don't provide the actual icons, they do provide a link to where you can find other icons that you can just use as placeholders and, you know, build out something similar. Because the idea is to not, you know, you want to be as close to the design as possible, but in cases like this, just practice the layout. So if you can't find the images to the icons or you don't know how to save out the images to the icons that are on the real website, just use the link that they provide to go to like Font Awesome or those different um, websites that provide icons and use those. The idea is to just get the layouts, practice your floats, pra uh, practice your flexbox, your grids, practicing those layouts. So keep that in mind about this platform. Now, the next platform I wanna talk about is called frontendmentor.io. You've probably heard more about this one more than the last one that I mentioned, but they're pretty similar in the sense that you can go to these platforms and you can pick a layout based on difficulty level. Now this platform does have a free version, but there's also a paid version, which we'll get into in a second, because I do see some benefits for paying for this platform. So one thing I do love about this compared to the first resource that I shared is that you do get the assets with your free account. So when you choose a layout to start building a challenge that you wanna start doing, they call it challenges on this platform, um, you choose your challenge and you download a zip file to put into your IDE, into like VS Code, add them whatever you're using to actually write out your code. And you typically get the starter files like your images, 
the different colors that were used, different things like that. Now, this next point is one of my favorite parts about this platform is the fact that in order to get points, so as you do your challenges, you submit them and you get points. And we'll talk about what those points go to, towards, like the different perks of those points later. But you get points for submitting the challenges. And the only way to submit the challenge is to upload it to GitHub because there's actually a real person that will look at your code, kind of critique it, give you a little feedback on what you can kind of do better, um, how you could have done something a little bit more different. But the fact that you have to upload to GitHub, I love that because it gives you practice. And if you don't know, once you get your actual role as a web developer or any kind of programmer, you want to be able to use platforms like GitHub and open source platforms to be able to collaborate with other individuals and share your code and also pull their code so that you can work and pick up where they left off and vice versa. So I love the fact that you have to use GitHub on this platform to submit your challenges because it gives you practice with that open source platform. Now, I personally do have a free account, but I wanted to also share what you get when you pay for their platform in case it's something that you might be interested in. I personally am okay with the free account because I just go on there to get the challenge and submit the challenge, get the feedback. But what you don't get with the free version is that actual design. So they give you a Figma or a sketch design if you pay for the platform, but if you don't, you do not get that but you do get images and typically that's been enough for me. So let's talk about a couple of perks that you get if you go the paid route. There is an $8 a month version and a $12 a month version at the time of filming this. Now, one of the main reasons that I personally would pay for this platform is because remember I said that you submit challenges and as you submit challenges, you get points. Well, those points in the paid version can be used to unlock a status of available to work, kind of like on LinkedIn where you can put that you're open to work. There is a option to do that here if you pay for the platform. Now, the reason that this is awesome and benefits you is because recruiters actually come to frontendmentor.io and they look for people who have the paid platforms and they're able to see your work. So you're actually being able to submit your work, but it's also showcasing things that you know how to do because the recruiters can view your GitHub or they can view the projects that you submitted and see that you actually know how to do what you set out to do. Another thing I wanted to point out before we close out this resource is that this is a trusted platform. I've seen a lot of big YouTubers use this in their tutorials when they're trying to teach you how to do stuff. For instance, Kevin Powell here, who's really good and known for creating content around CSS. So if you're struggling with CSS, I highly recommend checking out his channel, Traversy Media. If you don't know who he is and you're learning how to code, you need to go research Traversy Media and also Jessica Chan. I love her so much and she, I think, goes by Coder Coder here on YouTube. So they've all used this platform to kind of help do their tutorials and show people how to do certain things when it comes to web development. So I highly recommend checking them out and I'll have all of that in the description below. Now, the next platform is a little bit more on the fun side. It is a way to kind of learn by doing in real time. So if you're used to free code camp, you actually read, it's kind of the same idea. So you're actually gonna read about what you're learning and then immediately apply it to get the frog to go from one lily pad to the next. So the idea is to get him to go from one place to the next by using different properties and values when it comes to using CSS Flexbox. So I love this platform. It's free, it's fun, it's cute. And if you are a 90s baby like me, you remember Frogger. And I think I used to play that on like the very first PlayStation, but I'm dating myself. But yeah, it kind of reminds me of that. So I really, really love this platform. It's a fun way to kind of break away from the traditional, you know, reading, listening to lectures type learning and just actually have fun and get in there and play a game while you learn. Now y'all know it would not be a video of mine if I did not mention Free Code Camp. I love Free Code Camp. You guys have heard me rant and rave about it. I'm gonna continue to because the amount of resources that you get for free is just amazing and it just keeps getting better and better as the years go. But Free Code Camp is going to be amazing if you want to learn how to code by doing and get that practice in by building actual projects because at the end of each course that you take on that platform, you have to build a project to get certain amount of credit for things. So you're gonna go through, for instance, the whole HTML course, learn about the basics of HTML, and then at the end of that course, you're going to build a form. This is at the time of me filming this because sometimes free code camps, they, you know, they change around the different projects that you have to do and they change around the different things that you have to do to move on to the next section. But again, I love free code camp because like I said, you learn 
And in order to move on, you have to actually apply what you just learned to be able to go to the next step. So that in itself is actually learning by doing. And I highly recommend checking out Free Code Camp if you haven't because it is free and you have nothing to lose. Even if you're doing another resource, you could use this as kind of like a supplement to whatever you're using um, to get more knowledge and just, like I said, actually get that practice in. The last website I want to talk about is W3Schools. Now, W3Schools is an interesting one when it comes to this topic because I kind of just learned about some of the different resources they provide pretty recently. I would usually go to W3Schools to get help with an issue, trying to find a solution to a problem when I'm um, programming. So I would use W3Schools, MDN, of course, and Stack Overflow, of course. But W3Schools was just another one of those type pro uh, platforms where I would go to get help with solutions for my code. But recently when I was stuck on a problem, I was trying to learn something about JavaScript and I was like, well, what is this? And I noticed that they have different exercises that you can take. They also have different quizzes that you can take. So as you're learning about different topics, let's just say you're learning about HTML, you can actually go to w3schools.com and look at their quizzes choose the topic that you are learning and get quizzed on it. Now, this isn't necessarily a website that I would consider you would go to to practice learning as far as building something, but in the sense of practicing the actual act of learning and actually quizzing yourself to know that you actually know what this stuff means, this is amazing. And that's just as important as building a project. That's why I wanted to throw this one in there. Now, of course, when it comes to learning how to code, the actual idea of building and practicing and actually physically coding yourself, not just watching tutorials and coding along with other people, but actually doing it yourself is extremely important. That's the whole reason we're doing this video today. Um, but, you know, I like to use the analogy of basketball. You're not going to learn how to play basketball by simply watching LeBron play in the games all day. You're going to have to get the ball yourself, go out there and dribble, go out there and shoot to get better and to actually learn and to know where you need to improve. That's the way coding is. But in the same sense, outside of building projects, I do think it's also very important to learn how to learn, but to also know how to challenge yourself to make sure that you're retaining what you're learning. So you're not learning and forgetting, and then you have to feel like you have to start all over again because it kind of sets you back. That's like a setback in code and, and like learning how to code. So being able to have resources that you also can quiz yourself and do different exercises is honestly very important as well. So I wanted to throw this one in there and I'm learning so much about learning how to learn and feeling like I am, you know, always at the beginning of my journey because I'm always learning so many different things and I can't wait to share so many things that I have learned in just the last few weeks with you guys very soon. But for now, we'll just keep it here with the resources that we're talking about today. So in conclusion, I do want to leave you guys with a few points. The first one being that, yes, it is very important to read documentation, watch your tutorials, or use whatever resource you're using to learn how to code. But it is even more important to take that information and whatever you're reading, whatever you're watching, listening to, and actually apply it. Putting it into practice is how you're going to solidify what you know and get better. And it's literally the only way that you can become a programmer. You cannot become a programmer by watching and reading all day long. You have to put in the work. Speaking of documentation, this could be like a little extra tip for this video. I had a lot of you guys ask me in one of my last videos, like, where do you even find the documentation? What am I talking about? So I wanted to kind of like share quickly with you guys, if you, let's say you are learning JavaScript, if you want to read up on that programming language and like really read up on the exact ways to use all the different things that go along with that programming language, just simply take that programming language name, go to Google and type in JavaScript documentation. So if you're learning Python, you want to search for the documentation, Python documentation into a Google search. Um, for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, I would usually recommend going to MDN. And again, I'll put all of this stuff in the description below. You guys know, if you don't know, I fill up the description box every video with pretty much anything I've talked about, any resource that I feel like is important. So please be sure you're checking that out because nine times out of 10, if you're looking for something, it's gonna be there. Um, but yeah, if you are looking for documentation, just think about what are you learning? Go to Google, type in what you're learning, and then at the end of it, put documentation and you'll be able to find it. So in the comments, I really would appreciate if you guys would leave some resources that you're using to learn how to code to actually apply what you're learning and build out projects. Um, are you using resources like these? Are you actually designing out different 
projects yourself? Are you going to places like Behance or Dribble and Pinterest to just look for simple web designs and trying to recreate them that way? There's another bonus thing for you guys that you can try. Um, leave it in the comments because I always look for help for different things just as much as I try to provide the help to you guys. And also I like for the comments to kind of be another place that other people can come and get more information that I may have missed or different things that other people are doing that I don't know about. So yeah, leave a comment. What are you doing to apply what you're learning and actually build projects and learn how to code? As always, I thank you guys so much for being here and especially for making it to this part of the video. You guys are amazing. I appreciate you guys for 5K subscribers. I'll be doing probably a question and answer here pretty soon because I've never done one of those on this channel. So I would love to do that, especially to celebrate the 5K milestone. I thank you guys so much. You guys don't know how much I appreciate you guys. Be sure to like this video if it helped you. Be sure to share it. Be sure to comment. And I will see you guys in the next one.